Okay, this video is going to show you how to use a program called StatPack. And the StatPack is a macro, or in a less technical term, a add-in for Excel. So the first thing you'll need, in fact the only thing you'll need, is a copy of StatPack itself, or more technically, its proper name is OzStatPack. So you just download that one single file from um, our class head moto page and you can put it wherever you can put it onto um, the USB you can put it onto your desktop wherever you want to put it it's all good probably the easiest way to use it is just to open up an existing Excel document or to start a new Excel document and then load it from there so in this case I've got an existing Excel document called demo I'm gonna open that and once I've opened it I'm going to go back to the desktop where StatPack is and double click on that. And what it does is it adds in an extra tab up the top called Add-ins. Now if I click on Add-ins, you can see that we now have a thing called StatPack there. And if I click on StatPack, it will give me a couple of different statistics options. Now you may find when you're trying to use StatPack for the first time that you'll get an error message coming up or a security warning and it will say, um, do you want to allow this macro to work? It may contain viruses, blah, 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 blah. In this case, don't worry too much about that. It's perfectly legit. So you would click on enable macros or something similar to that, and it will work fine just after that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at um, how to create a histogram from a set of data. And okay, I still have my histogram from the last time I tried to use it, so I'm just going to delete all of that first. Cool, all right. So this is basically using the same set of data as is on page 275 in the textbook, Year 11 um, Math Studies. And um, what I've decided to do is I'm going to take that data and create a histogram out of it. So in this case, my data starts at 242.5 and goes all the way up to 277.5. Um, in this case, I've entered it in, in order from smallest to biggest. So let me get rid of this first. Um, but it doesn't matter if your data is in order or not, it'll work just as fine if it's all scrambled up. So I highlight my data, I go to add-ins and to stat pack, and I choose histogram. Once I've done that, this window will come up and I need to tell it three things. Output cell, starting value, and step value. Now I'm going to leave output cell to the last part, and I'm going to start with starting value. So obviously that's what number your histogram starts at. So in this case, the, my smallest number was 242.5, so I'm going to probably want to start at 240, so just below that. And then my step value, that's, in other words, that's the size of my class interval. Um, I'm going to make my class interval go up by fives. So my first class interval would be from 240 to just below 245. My second class interval would be from 245 to 250 and so forth. And then the last thing I need is my output cell. So click here, click that little icon here. And you're basically just going up and showing the computer where you want to put your histogram when it's created it. So I'm going to click there. And I'm going to go click this little red icon here and then go OK. And there we go. So it spits out a histogram and it also spits out the raw data it used to create that histogram. So in other words, that stuff there is a frequency table. Alright, now the histogram, I might just make it a bit bigger. Histogram is not particularly attractive. Um, that's one of the uh, shortcomings of StatPack is that it makes things easily, like histograms, but they're not particularly customizable. But what I could probably do in this case is I could change the title if I wanted. I could probably change the labels there, maybe make the bars look a little bit prettier. But that's about the limits of what it can do. What we probably need to have a look at before we finish up on this and go look at box plots instead is make it a bit bigger, 200% zoom. The labels down the bottom, because they're a bit unusual. Okay, so you see for each of the class intervals here, you've got two numbers in your label, 240, 245 for this one. First number is where it starts at, and the second number is where it ends at. 
So this starts at 240 and ends at 245. And then the brackets are different for each. There's a square bracket down here and a regular curly bracket here. The square bracket tells me that this interval starts at 240 and then it also includes the number 240. So a data value of exactly 240 would be counted towards this particular interval. Whereas the regular sort of curly bracket here tells me that the class interval ends at 245, but it does not include 245. So if I had a value of exactly 245, that would actually go here in the next class interval. Okay, so I just thought I'd mention that. Um, in advanced mathematics, this is a pretty common way of labeling intervals, but you may not have seen it at year 11 or year 12. Right, so that's that done. Um, and if you wanted to, you could then go to page 275 and compare the histogram they've got there in the example to mine. It's basically exactly the same. One thing to note before we go on is that, as far as I know, StatPak does regular sort of frequency histograms. So in other words, the vertical axis here, it can give you the frequency of each interval. So one data value in the 240 to 245 interval, six data values in the 250 to 255 interval, and so on. What it will not give you is a uh, relative frequency histogram. So it won't tell you that there were so many percent in this interval, so many percent in this interval, so many percent in this interval. Um, you would have to do that by hand or possibly do it the long way in Excel. This is a lot faster than doing it the regular way in Excel, but you can still make a histogram in Excel by yourself doing it the old slow way if you wanted to. And you could then make that histogram a relative frequency one quite easily. All right, next one. This one here, if you want to go check my working, is data from question 2A, exercise 4C.2 on page 289 of the Year 11 Math Studies Statistics textbook. So basically what I want to do here, I've got a list of data. Um, again, it's in order, but it doesn't have to be. Works just as well if the data is not in order. And I want to create a five number summary. So I'm going to click and drag here. And just before we actually make the five number summary, we probably need to have a reminder of what the five number summary is. So the five number summary, if you remember, was, as the name suggests, five numbers that describe a set of data. The first number is the minimum, so the smallest number in the data. Then Q1, the median number, Q3, and then the last one is the maximum number in the data set. So you'll remember they are the five things you need to know to be able to draw a box and whisker plot. Okay, so to actually get this in StatPack, once you've highlighted them, you go to the Add-ins tab again, you choose StatPack, but this time you go to Five Number Summary. And you'll see the window this time is a lot simpler. There's Sample Range, which is we've already highlighted, and then Output Cell. And like before, click into Output Cell, click that, press where you want to go, then go OK. And there we go, that's your Five Number Summary there. Minimum, Q1, Median, Q3 and the maximum. All right, that's simple. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to use the same set of data but make a box plot instead. So highlight, go to add-ins, stat pack, go to box plot, and this is the simplest of the lot. It says here enter the sample range, but by clicking and dragging you've already done that, so all you have to do is press OK. And what it does, um, it creates a new sheet. So you remember that sheets are like pages in an Excel document and Normally, when you start a new Excel document, you have three. This has created a new one, so that's where sheet four comes in. And it will do that every time you make a box and whisker plot. So if I made 30 box and whisker plots, I'd get 30 new sheets down the bottom. Okay, so here's my box plot. It's not very pretty. I could probably change the title if I wanted to. I could probably get rid of that little legend there. But other than that, I can't change much about it. But it is very quick and easy to produce. And it's a good way of either making box plots to paste into a, say, a direct investigation assignment, or if you want to use it as a check for your um, work that you've done on the graphics calculator or you've done by hand, if you want to check it was correct, you could try doing it this way as well and see if you get the same answer. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that, and I'm just gonna, yep, delete. Go back to the original data, and I'm just gonna look at the effect of outliers on a box plot in StatPack. So I'm gonna add in the number 600 to my list here, which is obviously an outlier because it's way bigger than the rest. Highlight them all. Again, go to add-ins and StatPack and choose box plot. Okay, 
So again, it produces a new sheet. Here's the box plot. If you were, had good eyes, you would have seen that it's pretty much the same as it was last time. And then the outlier, which was 600, is here by itself. So StatPack has included it in the graph, but to show that it's not considered by StatPack to be part of the uh, data set, it's just put a single line here by itself that's not connected to the rest of the box plot. So that's showing you that, hey, this points in my data set, but we don't think it's part of it and we're calling it an outlier. So if you have individual lines by themselves here or possibly on the other side of the box plot, that's because StatPack has identified them as being outliers. All right, done.